Hey everyone, good afternoon. I guess it's not good morning anymore. What is it, Monday, May 11th, 2020? What a weird, man, I, it's so weird. It doesn't feel like May, it doesn't feel like, I don't know what it feels like. I, did you guys know yesterday, I did not know it was Mother's Day till about, I don't know what time, like noon. And then I was like, Oh, it's Mother's Day today. That's why everyone is acting a certain way. Like, because, you know, my mom died, so I don't really celebrate Mother's Day. Um, but, and then I realized my sister is a mother this year. I didn't even text her. Oh, well. Anyways, um, I don't, I don't do that holiday bullshit. Once you lose loved ones and stuff, that, all that crap, you're like, For, for the whatever. first time. Uh huh. She's a mom for the first time this year. This is her first Mother's Day. Yeah, it was my sister's first Mother's Day. I should have texted her. Maybe I will today. I just kind of forgot. I forgot it was Mother's Day because I don't tend to pay attention to holidays like that, especially because they're usually sad to me. So I usually don't want to think about it. But also my dad's birthday was coming up, so I was thinking about that. It's funny. I forgot about Mother's Day. But anyway, so um, you guys, guess what? The coolest thing happened yesterday, though. George Clinton, do you guys know George Clinton, Parliament? He hearted a tweet that Jedi Rich sent out yesterday um, to like he had sent it to a bunch of people and it was um, our Raiders uh, video, the Raiders theme um, song that we've been doing, you know, the Raider Nation song. And um, the one that was Ice Cube song and then we changed it to Vegas Raiders now. He hearted that and we were like, that's so cool because that means a lot coming from George Clinton. So we were super excited about that. It was on Jerry Rich's tweet. So that really made us feel good because that's just like, it's funny how like just a heart means so much on social media and people don't want to give them. It's really weird. It's like, I don't really understand what's the big deal about a heart. They go, oh, you might be endorsing that person. I say, not really. Most people don't really pay that much attention where it's like, oh, you heart. Like, it's not like you can heart things and people don't necessarily think that you believe everything that that person said. It's just like, no, you saw a video and you thought it was funny. I mean, some people take it so seriously where they read so far into it. If I see a tweet, I don't even look at the person's profile. If it's funny, I heart it. I don't care who that person is. People are so worried about what everyone thinks, but most people don't stalk other people's Twitters that often unless you're someone significant or people hate you. I don't know, maybe people stalk mine because they hate me, but I'm not that famous. Um, but so famous people get it and maybe if people hate you. But other than that, people ain't that worried about every person that you're hearting. So, geez louise, you're so stingy with something that doesn't even cost any money. You're just so worried, oh, I wouldn't want to associate or, oh, I wouldn't want this or I wouldn't want someone to know I'm stalking them too. A lot of times that's why people don't want to heart because then they, oh, they know I saw their thing. Well, who cares? Who cares? I go heart and comment to people's stuff that I know they'll never heart my stuff and I don't care. I just do it because I feel like it. But anyway, so we got that with George Clinton, so we were super stoked. And then we remembered we had a George Clinton album, so we were playing that this morning. We are like, ah, oh, it's good. We actually had a George Clinton CD that we had to order online. Like, you can't get it. We couldn't get it on Apple Music, so we ordered this one, but we lost that when we went to the cave, got stolen You know what, the, the thing of bringing up the hearts, though, is because... What's at risk here is all the casinos. You heard that maybe some of the right, casinos might right, be so open. That's what we're going to get into. And we've been doing this promotion yep. to hashtag Save Vegas. And tell yeah, them who so we tweeted. Tell to, them. So this is day 55. Yeah, yeah it, that's what I was going to get into. That's the juicy part of this. Jeremy, <laughs> can't wait. Uh, yesterday I met some of the so I'm going to get into that. But this is day 55 um, of the Vegas shutdown. And you guys, it is a mess here. I mean, Vegas is just going down the toilet and we act like nothing's going on. Some people are starting to kind of wake up. You know, they opened a couple of things this weekend, you know, like especially for Mother's Day, they opened some restaurants, but the casinos still don't have a solid date. So, okay, yesterday I had a client, I won't say his exact title because I don't want to, um, people that know him, I don't want, you know, to them to go, oh, they know who that is by me saying it, but he is very important at Stations Casino. He's one of the, people that's kind of in charge there. It was a client of mine yesterday and I went to this really nice gated community, it's a really, really nice house and stuff. 
And it was cool because he was telling me all this inside stuff now about the casinos. And it was interesting because I didn't give my perspective. I just let him talk. And I, and so he was like, he's also, do you know what this whole thing is about? And I was like, no, what is it about? He's like, oh, it's all political. And I'm like, oh, I was all just like letting him, I was like, oh, I just keep, I'm gonna be quiet. I'm just gonna listen and, get, and just find out as much as I can. But um, yeah, all of the casinos have been since the beginning trying to get them started again. And they know it's political. They know this is, um, an attempt, he says, first, they tried with the whole Russian collusion thing to get Trump out of office. And then they tried impeaching him. And now this is the third thing was this uh, virus hoax. It was a regular flu virus that they blew it all out of proportion to tank the economy and especially Vegas um, because Trump is very connected with Vegas. And so are all of his um uh, donors. donors for the campaign. So this is what the guy who is very, very important position at Stations Casino, um, he showed me all these photos of the palms. I wanted them so bad, but I know he couldn't give them to me, but um, of the palms now closed. It was very, very sad. He had showed me like everything's taken apart on the inside. It's it's done. It is done Like until someone buys it and revamps it and whatever the hell it is, but that place is done. They're closed. They're not opening. And same with, um, there's a good chance Excalibur is not opening. Um, uh, there's a good chance that it's gonna be just one of each one of the casinos. So when you have Venetian and Palazzo, it's only gonna be Venetian opening. When you have Wynn and Encore, it's only gonna be Wynn opening. And for like, for a long time, like they're talking maybe years or, or ever, you know, like ever. Like they're saying they're only opening. He says they don't even know if Caesars is gonna open, like the actual Caesars Palace, they're not sure. Uh, first off, they're planning on, um, uh, Station says they want to be the first to open, but they are still waiting on a date. And now I heard rumors that Treasure Island is opening on the 22nd, but according to this guy, who is super important and has been talking directly with Governor Sislek, I got to meet someone yesterday who was talking directly with Governor Sislek, and listen to what he said about Governor Sislek. He said that when they ask him, when can we open the casinos, and from the beginning, all they get back from him is, this is in his exact words, gibberish. They said Governor Sislek will not give anyone a date. He will not give them any logical explanation for anything. He will not give them any plan. It's just, oh, oh, uh, whoa, whoa, there's this, uh, we'll just figure it out. Like just gibberish of nonsense words that mean nothing. And they have hounded him for 55 days. They call and write and he literally ignores the casinos um, and uh, when he does respond, they said it's literally like gibberish. They cannot get a, any response from the guy that makes any sense. They think the guy is a fucking moron. From the words of the people here in Las Vegas, the heads of these casinos, this guy is a high up person at Station Casinos, and um, they are pissed because Palms is done, which was part of Stations Casinos. So say that, so say that again. I mean, just say, say what you say, because people are just jumping in now. Okay, yesterday okay. I had a client who is very important with Stations Casino. I'm not going to say his position, because that could actually, then people could know who he is. But he was important enough that he is someone that is directly contacting Governor Sislek on behalf of Stations Casino. And they just ignore the casinos or they respond with literally he said gibberish that is the word he said that when they ask him governor when can we plan on opening no word of uh any time or date he's just like oh blah, 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 which we just do this we'll just do this planned uh, uh pho phrase a phase thing you know like just nonsense words that don't mean anything and they've from the beginning they've been saying can you just give us a date that's all we want is a date and the guy won't give them a date so we still don't have a date that the casinos can open now they're saying treasure island wants to open on the 22nd but we don't have the confirm from governor sicily if that's even allowed and then they're saying when wants to open on the 26th of this month so like in a you know a week or two um 
Still, though, they have not confirmed if the governor will even allow them to open yet. And when they contact him, he does not respond, or if he responds, he does not give them any answers. And they are so frustrated, Uh, and they know it's all political to take down Trump. That is what they are saying. That is what all the casino owners are saying. They know this is 100% political. It is not about a flu virus. It Uh, is to take down Trump. That is what the guy said. I didn't even give my opinion. I was just like... A question. Taz wants to know, uh, does your contact believe that people are really dying from the virus? Yes, he believes that people that are ill are dying. And he said actually his boss got the coronavirus uh, in November. Yeah, in November, his boss got it, and he got really ill, and they thought, you know, he was, uh, you know, not going to make his, it's, you know, it's, it's intense when he gets it, and now he's fine. All better. And uh, this guy said he believed he had it, too. He was going to get tested today, actually, to see if he uh, had it because they're making them all get tested now. But he believed he already had it in December because he got it right after his boss. And he said, yeah, it sucked, but then you got over it because it's a flu virus that people are recovering from. A very small percentage are dying, and they are the people that were already ill. And when they say healthy, healthy is just a word. It doesn't mean anything. What define healthy? Everyone has a different definition of what healthy is. So when they say this healthy 17 year old died or this healthy really because obviously if they died from a flu virus they're not healthy because the only people that are dying from this are the people that are unhealthy like very unhealthy like very sick very ill in the hospital already or have some sort of condition already some sort of respiratory condition. You are a sacred god. Huh? You are a sacred god. I am a sacred god. That's what they say. Thank you. (laughs) Anyways, um, so the thing is, yes, some people have died. Like how everyone dies every year from the flu virus, they have people die. You know what I mean? Not everyone, sorry. People die every year. (laughs) Everyone dies every year. Right. People die every year from the flu virus. Around 50,000 every year in the U.S. die, and around 650,000 worldwide die every year from the flu virus. I'm all tongue tied today. Um, so yeah, people are dying, but more people are recovering. And it's like, they're saying now it's like a 99.9% chance that you'll recover. Oh, that's what I need. That's what I need, yeah. For those of you who don't know, this is, uh, if you want to really make her happy, this is how you do it. It literally says on the back of here, for your health and (laughs) well-being, it's got all kinds of minerals, like calcium, magnesium, biocarbonate, and it's low in sodium. Hmm. Sounds pretty good. Oh, it's the little. Te amo mucho. It's my favorite thing. Mm-hmm. My favorite thing in like the whole world now. For real, huh, Jared Rich? We've had fights over Gerald Steiner's. He's like, you drank the last Gerald Steiner. You're so greedy with the Gerald Steiner's. <laughs> That's what the fights we have over, over water. Because all we eat is um, organic beef, organic collard greens, organic kale, organic... That's it. And um, water and sparkling water. But um, we will, if we, they're out of beef, we will consider other things. Like we had, Jedi Rich likes to do a little bit of wild tuna. But I don't like that. Um, wild ahi tuna, that upsets myself. I had a little bit yesterday, and now my stomach's upset today. I was like, oh. Because I was bleeding for 15 years. But we'll get into that later. So back to the thing. So I met this guy, and he was telling me all about this. So the casinos are livid, and most of them are not going to be able to open. Like, they're already talking that it's probably going to only be, like, 50% that will open in any near future on the strip. So, like, it's going to be, like, one casino open, one casino closed, one casino open. So it's going to be very not so cool on the strip for many years. It's going to be like a ghost town here a little bit, you know, not, like, not lively like it was where all these lights went off things because it's going to be, like... You know, when you walk on the ship, you're gonna be like, oh, there's the plaza that's now not open. There's Encore that's now not open. There's Excalibur that's now not open. And it's just gonna be these just vacant buildings, all due to a regular flu virus that the 
less than they're saying now even of people than the regular flu virus because they're finding that most of the numbers have been fabricated and they're fabricated in the sense of for one thing they're counting people that were already going to die so like if someone was already very very ill in the hospital and then they got pneumonia which when you're really ill and you get pneumonia pneumonia kills people that are already super super sick um well then they got the coronavirus on top of it but it's like they were already going to die well they were counting it as a coronavirus and you can't really do that that's what they're doing now and then also they're doing ones even if they die of anything like they're saying oh if they had the coronavirus and let's say they got in a car accident but they're like oh they had the virus and they died so they're adding those numbers in and they're finding that they really are doing i'm not just saying this this is um, real stuff coming out like the uh, Center for Disease Control is talking about the, the, the numbers they're showing the differences of the ones um, the CDC where it's the pneumonia ones uh, you have to take those out of the equation and then the ones that it actually so you can look at those numbers yourself I'm not making this up but so Governor Sisolak shut down Nevada for a regular flu virus and the reason why you, you can't say he was doing it for the flu virus because he allowed the Allegiant Stadium and all construction to continue the entire time even when 16 workers that we know have tested positive at the Raiders Stadium and then several at um, we know of I know of five at the Resort World but I think more now because I know they finally had to they personally resort world decided to shut themselves down because it, it was so many people kept testing positive that they were like let's clean the site um but not even the governor shut that down and so all along i knew it was a political stunt because how are you going to allow construction for one thing if there was a deadly virus we would all be dead because he allowed construction and they would have spread it to all of us because it, it was spreading like wildfire through the construction sites so just the regular flu it's like people were like oh well it was spreading that means no i mean just like the regular flu spreads when everyone is being close that's what they were trying to avoid is you know when you get the regular flu it spreads if you're in close quarters well, all you get is the flu. This is why I'm so frustrated because people have stopped the whole world for something that you recover from. It's like, yeah, it sucks when you get the flu. No one likes to be laid up for like two weeks feeling like shit, but you get over it and then the world continues. But instead we shut down for something that, oh, like 0.1% are dying, so we're going to shut down for that. But most of the people are recovering and all they had was just a flu and where it just was uncomfortable for a couple weeks, usually about two weeks, maybe a little longer with this one. This one is a little more of a cough. It's in your respiratory, so you might be coughing. It's very uncomfortable probably for those two weeks because you're just coughing, hacking up. It's not pleasant, but you live. And so the reason that especially the Democratic governors have taken such extreme measures is because they were trying to sabotage the economy so that you would not vote Republican and especially not vote for Trump. And the reason why that's so important in this particular election is because there's a good chance one of those Supreme Court judges is going to die in the next term. And if you guys are unaware, you can only get a new Supreme Court judge when one dies. And that one judge, Ginsburg, she's very ill. She's someone that the coronavirus could kill if she got, because she is very ill. She's been in and out of cancer remission. They already thought she was going to die a couple times now. So someone like her, if she had got the coronavirus, then she could have died. Now, I don't think she did. I think she's still living, <laughs> as far as I know. Um, but... Here's the thing. Right now, Republicans have the majority of Congress, and right now they have a Republican president. So the only thing that was stopping any bills or laws was the Supreme Court. If they get a Supreme Court judge appointed, then they're going to have the majority of the Supreme Court and the Congress, and then it don't matter if they're president or not. Because once you have the Supreme Court and Congress going Republican, even if it's a Democratic president, they can't get anything passed. And if it's a Republican president, it's even scarier because they can get everything passed that they want. And the Democrats would have no say. So this year, it is so pertinent that they get a Democratic president in office because they want to appoint the Supreme Court judge. So they were willing to do anything. They already, you know, have tried. They were saying, and I don't, I don't vote. So I'm not saying I'm for Trump or for the Democrats. I literally do not vote. I never have. And I never will unless they change the system. Because I don't agree with it. And I don't agree with anyone that they've put up for me to vote for anyways. I think they're all greedy billionaires that play around with our lives. And they're all friends. 
You know, they all go to the same wedding parties while we sit here and we are suffering when they shut down the economies while they're playing games of who wants to be leader. So I don't partake in that. People go, oh, well, what good does not voting do? I don't know. It's better than partaking in a system that is completely flawed. I think not voting, if everyone would not vote, then they would have to change the system. But if you continue to just encourage their horrible system, then you guys aren't any better. Like, not voting would actually make a statement. If people said, I'm not going to vote, and if everyone threw down the tools I ain't voting, then they'd have to change it. But everyone just says, well, I'll just choose who's better than the last one. You know, the worst of the, you know, can't, oh, I don't know which one. You know, I'll just... You know, it's, like, ridiculous. No one ever likes either candidate, really. I think the only one that most people have liked, uh, like, what they actually liked was Obama. You know, he was liked by a lot of people, but most of these candidates people don't like. Um, he was also hated by a lot of these people, too. Uh, Trump is always talking... What are they talking about? Obamagate now? What is this nonsense? What is Obama getting brought up? I guess he has a lot of haters, too, but he, he had a lot of people that supported him. A lot of people really liked Obama. I liked Obama. I thought he was the best president we've had since I've been alive. Um, but anyways, um, the thing is, it's people think that the government is not willing to sabotage our lives for their own gain. <laughs> and I say they do that all of the time. Uh, so I don't know why we think, like, in this scenario, oh, no, they were looking out for us for this uh, flu virus. No, I mean, the government never has our best interest. For one thing, they make things like cigarette and alcohol legal and weed illegal. When we're finding out that weed is one of the most beneficial things and it should have never been illegal, and it was Nixon who made it a, a drug and made it like this high class where it was, a, the, you know, the top level of drugs up there with, like, heroin and meth which is not even a drug, it's a plant. It doesn't even have the, the classifications to be a drug. They just did that in the 80s, and then they made this big old hysteria about it and convinced everyone it was awful. Weed is one of the best things you can do, and um, that's what helped me get over my bulimia. That's what helped me figure out um, my nutrition of what I needed to eat. Um, people think the opposite with weed. They think it gives them the munchies. What happens sometimes with the first time you experience weed is you might be feeling, um, you're, it'll tell you how you actually feel that where you've been like not uh, paying attention to those things. So one of the things is you probably have not been eating right. So if you're, you can be obese, but you can still be undernourished, if that makes sense. So like you could be eating all the wrong foods, but when you go to smoke weed, it says, oh, you're hungry for like real food. But instead people go for like the macaroni and cheese and the potato chips and popcorn and stuff when they should be going for like meat because it's probably saying you need protein so if the first time you do weed you really get hungry it's probably because you haven't been eating right but once you start eating right weed doesn't do that to you you don't get like the munchies if anything it most of the time makes you not hungry um because it, it's very you, it usually if you felt hungry and then you smoke weed you kind of get start thinking about something else because weed always has your brain going on so many other things it's very active um it, it gets your brain so active yeah and um so sorry i'm i'm really having trouble today because i um you guys i still struggle with my uh I've been in recovery now for since 2016 is when I stopped throwing up. 2015 is when I first, you know, started to try, and then 2016 is when I stopped. But through the last, what are we now, 2020, so four years now, I struggled with finding what to eat, and I struggled with this bloating thing and the candida overgrowth, which I've talked about. And I was doing so good for a while, and then um, when... Governor Sislek shut everything down. I had to eat some things that I normally don't eat, like some fish and some chicken. And now ever since then, I've had just so many bloating issues. And it sucks because um, it goes away. Like, it's not as bad because, like, I'll eat my um, organic beef, and then I'll be bloated for a couple hours, and then it goes away. Where when I used to eat the other stuff, it'd be like that for, like, a day or two, and it'd be so uncomfortable. But it, it's unfortunate because that's why I eat such a rigid diet. Um, or if people would go, like... Why are you so extreme? But anything uh, off of what I normally eat, I uh, get this bloating thing, and it's so uncomfortable. It feels like you know, like you're pregnant because your stomach just goes like. Um, 
And that's from candida overgrowth. And you get that from sugary things, from antibiotics, from um, processed packaged foods, GMOs, caffeine, all this stuff. A lot of people have candida overgrowth and they don't realize. And when you're still eating sugar, your candida's kind of like, it just chilling. It's when you stop eating the sugar that it flares up. It's like, what are you doing? And it starts being like, feed me. And, and it releases all these toxins in your body. They release like 79 toxins. So you get sick. And that's what I've been going through. So that's why I came on here later. I was sleeping early. I did not feel well. And, um, but the best thing for candida overgrowth is to do an all beef diet um, because they love sugar so if you do no sugar you starve them out um, and that's what we do but we do um, the, the beef and garlic and collard greens and kale and that's what we eat we do you know like stews and stuff but that's it people are always like they don't understand we're like no we eat the same meal every day uh, every meal is the same meal <laughs> every day is the same it's like beef burgers every meal or beef stew or like beef bone broth and people go oh is that boring no it's actually amazing because when it's what your body wants it's all you want like every meal you want that and it's the most satisfying thing and you don't crave anything else it's amazing so uh, that's how we stay thin but you know what you guys I went on TikTok yesterday so TikTok, you know, I don't really use TikTok the way TikTok is supposed to be used. I just have fun and I just start singing and dancing on there because I just do like lip singing. I just think it's a blast. When I do it, I'll just get a wild hair and do it. So I did it yesterday. But oh dear Lord, was I shocked by the what happened. on? So I did my Chelsea Vegas profile on TikTok. I got so much hate. I could not believe it. It was... <sighs> I was like laughing, but I, I was stunned. I mean, people were saying the meanest things to me. And a lot of um, criticizing my age and my, how thin I am. And they were calling me, they were saying that I look like uh, Carol Baskins from that Tiger show. I'm like, oh, thanks. And then they were saying things <laughs> like that. I look like a grandma. And I'm like, geez, the ways these kids are fucking mean. I'm like 35. Yeah, I'm having fun just trying to do a dancing thing on their app. I didn't know that you had to be like under 20 to be on TikTok or else you'd be called a grandma. Jeez Louise. So, um, oh man, they were hating on me, but I got like 7,000 views on a couple of my videos. So I was like, yeah, that's cool. Normally I don't get any views. You guys, I upload things and sometimes I get zero views. I'm like, how is that possible? How do you get, I mean, couldn't someone just happen to accidentally stumble on your video and you get one view? I mean, I've uploaded things that I got zero views and I go back a couple days later. Zero views. I thought, man, <laughs> mine doesn't even count as a view, and I go in it. Guess not. I was like, geez, Louise. And so I, I was happy about getting 7,000 views, but geez, it was the nastiest stuff people were saying to me. I'm like, all right. <laughs> Okay, this this young gen is fun. So that was my TikTok experience yesterday. Good lord, I was just doing these little, and I was I was choosing all. Of, what's hilarious is I was choosing all of the old songs too, which just showed my age as well. Because I was doing like Britney Spears and Christina Aguilera and all those ones. I just thought it'd be funny. Um, and um, oh, I did TLC because I heard that song the other day, the No Scrubs. I hadn't sure heard that song in years, and I heard it on some. Come on, I was like, oh my gosh, I should do that song on TikTok. It'd be like a throwback thing. Shit, I got like throwback. They were like, get off here, Grandma. No, oh, Mom, your friend Karen's on here, and I'm like. I guess that's an insult. I don't know who Karen is, but apparently it's supposed to insult me. So I don't think that was meant to be a nice thing. And it was just nonstop things. And then they're like, there's children on here. Because I was wearing like a uh, kind of sexy outfit. I didn't even think about it. I was just like put on an outfit. And then I was like, oh, I guess that was too sexy for them. <laughs> but um, yeah, so that was funny yesterday. But um so this whole thing is really frustrating with the Vegas shutdown, though, because it's all like they really destroyed these casinos for no reason. So so this guy showed me all these photos of the Palms. The guy I met yesterday, he's uh, very important at Station Casino. I'm not going to say his title because I think he's the only one that holds that title. <laughs> and then that would 
identify him, um, but a very important person. So he was directly talking with Governor Sislek about this whole time, and Stations wants to open as soon as they can. I mean, like, as soon as the date. They're literally still asking Governor Sislek for a date. They say, can we have a date that we can open, and he won't give them a date. Uh, the rest of the country is opening, and he won't give the casinos a date when they can open. Now, I've heard rumors that uh, Treasure Island is supposed to open on the 22nd, but there still is not a date. If you go looking at anything on Governor Sisolik's thing, he still has no date for He just says, we have a phase and approach plan. He just literally says gibberish, like the guy said. He doesn't really say anything. It's like words that don't say anything. It's like a lot of words that, that at the end of the thing, you're like, they... What did those words say? They didn't say anything. <laughs> like, none of the questions were answered. It was like, oh, what are we going to do? Oh, we're going to have this phase and approach. Okay, what date? Well, the phase and approach, we're going to figure out the date once we figure out the phase and approach. Okay, well, what date can we plan? Well, you know, first we've got to do the phase and approach. So it's like... So it's really frustrating, and, and they're sad. This guy was very upset because he said he was one of the people that opened the Palms even before he worked for Stations Casino. He worked for the Palms back in the day when it originally opened, and um, he was so sad to then be part of the closing of it now that he works for Stations Casinos. And he was showing me all the photos, and it's sad, you know. Because if you love Vegas, it's very sad to see these casinos closing. People go, oh, who cares? Just casinos. Well, you know, a lot of people really did enjoy coming here, whether you like gambling or anything, but just they enjoyed coming to the casinos because they're beautiful and it was a wonderful place and they've always been 24 hours. They didn't even have, some of the casinos didn't even have locks on the doors because they've been open. They never closed. They're 24 hours until Governor Sislek shut them down for no reason. For a regular flu virus that was a political stunt to take down Trump. And that makes me very sad. If it had been where uh, people were really dying and there was this pandemic and we all needed to do the scare, which they tried to act like there was, but it's not the case. They're realizing now that there's like a 0.1% of death rate or something like that. So it's like you have like 99.9% .9 chance of living. And we shut down all of Vegas to where the, the most of the casinos, half of them, there's a good chance they're not coming back. Like, they don't even know if they're going to open, like, ever again. Like, it's good. Like, people are like, oh, no, it's like, they, it's most of the owners are like, okay, I can open one of my properties, but the other one, we can't. We're going to have to scrap it until further notice. So, like, Wynn is going to open Wynn, but they're scrapping Encore. Uh, Venetian is opening Venetian and scrapping Palazzo. Like, they cannot open both their properties. Maybe ever. Unless, like, until, like, you know, and if, if everything turns around and everyone comes back. But, I mean, until further notice, they cannot open their other properties. They have no plan to open their other properties. They're just pressing to open one of their properties for most of the businesses. Now, um, I know uh, MGM is planning on doing Bellagio in um, New York, New York first. And then um, they're not even starting about talking uh, of opening a lot of the other ones until 2021 and like late into 2021. Like Aria isn't set to open until like September 2021. 2021. Um, so that means for like a year, the strip is going to have like maybe like five casinos open maybe. And all of the rest of them are going to be just like abandoned buildings, basically. I mean, I'll show you they'll keep up the maintenance so they don't get run over with weeds. I don't even know. Like tumbleweeds. I don't know, but it's going to be very barren. And all for a political stunt to try to get a Democratic president. And the good chance it's going to backfire on them and they're not even going to get a Democratic president after all this. Because people are starting to realize what's going on. And like I said, I am not political i don't vote so i hate when people are like oh just because i'm saying it's not a deadly virus they think i'm a trump fan for one thing i don't like trump but i also really don't like the democrats right now and i thought trump was the worst thing i'd ever seen until governor sisolik really took first place there i had never seen anything as bad as governor sisolik Mr. Slimeball, Sleazy, Steve Sisolik. Um, that guy is the worst politician I've ever seen to date. Uh, and what he has done to Nevada is beyond belief. It, it makes me cry 
every time I go and see a casino. So if I go to the ship, I'm like in tears. But if even if I go by South Point, I'm just like, because we live by South Point, and I'm, mm, I have to drive by it on the bus because I ride the bus because we don't have a car, you know. And now we, we, man, we're like three weeks behind on rent. Luckily, you know, they can't evict yet. Uh, I mean, where where every dime goes to food and water and any bills that we can pay, and then uh, we do weed too, and people go, oh, weed, that's our medicine. We tried the first week, we were like, okay, we really don't, we're gonna have to come back, let's not even do weed, and we just, it doesn't work for us because we use it as our medicine. It's not for enjoyment, really. I mean, people think, people don't understand, when you do weed more, like when you first do weed, it's like, oh, I'm laughing, and you're being, a lot of times when I take a bong hit, I get fucking pissed for a minute because I don't feel good, and it like hurts, and I cough, but it's like, it's healing me because I have so much damage from all the years of bulimia, and I was an alcoholic. I was a really bad alcoholic. I don't know if people realize that. So I damaged myself a lot, too, from that. I was, like, a bad alcoholic for about two years. I was drinking a liter and a half a rum a day for a solid year uh, when we lived in Panama. Oh, man, I got all kinds of alcohol things. I went through, like, alcohol withdrawals. Man, you guys don't want to go through alcohol withdrawals. Like, people think, like, hangovers, that is alcohol withdrawals, but no, like, alcoholic alcohol withdrawals <laughs> Woo, man that is like something you never experience so I have sympathy for people when they're homeless and they're alcoholics like give them a beer because it is not it's not fun those are the worst it's the worst so I don't drink anymore um we don't drink alcohol at all or caffeine and those are the big things of how to stay trim is no alcohol no caffeine no sugar no gluten no dairy no GMOs, no artificial anything. We just do food from this earth, as in organic animal meat. We do beef. That's what I like, but you can pick which meat you like if you don't want to do beef. Um, but real animal meat. And you go, oh, what about the animals? Yes, it does suck eating animals. I mean, I'd prefer if it, we could have a world that we didn't have to, but that's part of nature, and I can't change that. And the best food for you is animal protein. And the way that you can feel better about it is by eating organics, because then that's food uh, that they did not taint with antibiotics, steroids, hormones, um, additives, and genetically modifying it and colorings and all this stuff that they do to the plants and the animals of conventional food. So they do that with the apples and the fruits and stuff. They want them to be a certain color and they do a certain size. So they add these hormones, steroids, colorings, all this stuff. So you have this perfect apple. People don't like things to not be like consistent. They want, hey, why does that apple look all retarded looking and like deformed? I don't want that one. Well, that's organics will look more that way. And so people are like, oh, it's smaller and it's ugly. Yeah, because it's food from nature. It's not going to be perfect the same as when you see food that looks the same every time that means they did something to it because from nature it's not going to be the same when you get beef um like when it's organic you'll see sometimes you have a really big steak we don't just take some more we can't afford it but we used to and other times you get a small one you know what i mean it just depends in because it's just the way it actually went you know instead of when you see conventional it's just pretty consistent you know you get it's going to be as the steaks look this size, look this way, this color. Um, and when you're eating organics, then you can know that they're treating the fan animals fairly. They have uh, humane treatment. They're cage-free, pasture-raised. We do grass-fed, pasture-raised, cage-free, um, uh, no... Uh, uh, no cruelty. You know, you can do uh, um, whole foods. They have even steps where uh, step five is the best level of treatment for the animals. That can make you feel better. And people go, oh, I don't want to eat death. That's the argument with the vegans. You're eating death if you're eating plants because plants are living as well. And so is anything that's made in the lab is now a living organism. So you're always eating death. And eating death is how you gain knowledge. So you want to eat death. So that's a really stupid argument. And they say, oh, the animals squeal when they die. Everything squeals when they die, but dying is a part of life. Just like with this coronavirus. The people that died were the people that were going to die this year. That's the bottom line. The people that died from the coronavirus were going to die this year from something. It was not people that were healthy. If you weren't going to die this year, you weren't going to die from the coronavirus. <laughs> like it was the people that were already near death. 
that anything like pneumonia, a flu virus, even the common cold sometimes can kill those people, and those are the ones that died. And unfortunately, it's a lot of people's grandparents. I lost most of my grandparents. I think I only have like one living grandparent. And my mom died, and my brother. So I know about death, and Jedi Rich's father and brother died. So losing loved ones sucks, but it doesn't mean that you shut down the world for a regular flu virus because someone's grandma died. And you don't shut down all the casinos. Because here's the thing. People think, oh, who cares? But you know what? There was people that lived here that worked at these casinos, like, that didn't have a lot of money. Like, the maids that work really hard, the housekeepers. And now all of those people are out of work. The cocktailers, the bartenders, the servers, the um, dealers, all these people. It's not like they can go anywhere else. Their only job was in casinos. There are no casinos. And when the casinos open, there's only going to be a couple. But that's going to be thousands and thousands of people out of work. Each casino housed thousands of jobs. And every casino that closed, now those thousands of people are out of work and don't have another place to go. There isn't another casino that they can go to because everyone is going to try to congregate to the only ones that are open, and most of them already have their staff. They'll probably stick with the same people they already had. They'll rehire them. So all of those... Thousands of workers on every level, landscaping, um, housekeeping, dealers, bartenders, restaurant people, um, you know, pool people, anything, anything, managers, you know, CEOs, I mean, anything, an entire casino, cashiers, you know, I mean, anything, the whole thing that makes the whole front desk receptionist, anything in a casino, thousands and thousands and thousands of jobs, all are out of work in Nevada and have nowhere to go. Nowhere to go. There's no other place that had all these casinos. All these people are like 20, 30, 40 year casino workers. Where are they going to go? There's no job. They're not trained in anything else. They were trained in casino jobs. There's no casinos for them to go to anywhere now. All because of a regular flu virus. That makes me infuriated. And if you're not upset, if you live in Las Vegas and you're not upset, then you are dead right now. Like, to the world. Like, you are already dead because you're not alive. Does that make sense? Like, you can be dead while you're still living. And if you don't realize what's going on, you are dead right now. You might as well get the coronavirus and die because you're dead already inside if you're not realizing that this is huge what just happened and this sucks big time for people. Big time. For no reason. For a political stunt by Slimeball Sisolak and his cronies that wanted Biden in office. That, like, slithery little uh, touchy-feely guy. I liked Obama, but that guy's a weirdo. Man, they got some weirdos going as Democrats. Like, get a good Democratic candidate one of these days, and maybe you'll get a Democrat elected. You pick the biggest buffoons and put them up there. Jeez Louise. I mean, they, it was like they couldn't fight anyone uh, to go against Trump this year. It's like... You had four years to find a candidate. Four years. And y'all couldn't find anybody? Your best options were fucking Biden and then Bernie who quit? Bernie, was, he was all right when you kind of oddball, but he quit. And then, so whatever. So if they, and then, so that's what they realized. No one's going to vote for the buffoons. So that's why they decided to sabotage the economy. They hope that people will blame Trump and that you won't vote Trump and you won't vote Republican if the economy stinks. But you really should not vote Democratic at this point. That's honestly my opinion. And I'm not saying vote Republican either. I'm saying don't vote at all. But I definitely would not encourage voting Democratic after what they just did. I think what they did is worse than what I've ever seen any other candidate do at this point. And I didn't know they could be worse than Trump for some of the shenanigans he's pulled as president already. But this is horrific. And you guys, if you are thinking it is for a deadly flu virus, it, okay, every flu virus kills people. So you can call every flu virus deadly if you're using that definition. But what they implied by deadly, like I said, these are words that don't really 
they have many different meanings to everyone has a different explanation of what they think that means. But when they're saying deadly thing and we're going to shut down the world because this deadly, deadly virus, that's making people think that it means if you get it, you're going to die. And that is not the case. If you get it, 99% chance you're going to live. I think it's 99.9% chance you're going to live. They're saying 0.1% chance you're going to die. That would not really make it a deadly virus that we need to shut shut down the whole world that'd be more like hey you'll probably live if you get it so we might as well just carry on and if you get the flu virus just stay home for two weeks from work instead of everyone staying home for 60 days until it's long enough for none of the businesses to be able to survive so you guys just keep telling yourself that these governors made the right decisions and you're just going to be living in denial. And that's when I say you're already dead to the world if you're doing that. Because what good is someone who is living in an altered reality that uh, is, like, like so really unaware happened? of, like, what's really going on? Is that person really uh, useful to society? Because they're, they're, they're just useless. They're, they're, like, useless. It's like the guy's out there. He don't fucking know what's going on. I mean, and that's how most of you are right now with your masks. When I see someone with a mask, I just go, I write that person off. I'm like, that person's a fucking moron. I don't even have to bother at this point. In the beginning, some people, you know, and if it's for your job, that don't count. If you have to for your job. Or if you're in somewhere where it's actually mandatory. But I'm saying if you're choosing to put that shit on your face anymore, then I write you off as you're just useless to me and to society and to the universe because you are not living in reality. You are living in this fake little like bubble of, oh, everything's fine. Government's going to take care of me and we just have the deadly virus and now we're all safe and now, oh, no, thank you. Thank you, Tesla. Thank you, Tesla. You really, really help us out. Oh, it's okay. All the casinos will come back and it'll be no problem. And Are you guys fucking in, out of your mind? For one thing, the casinos are not coming back. A couple of them are coming back. So when you say casinos, some not all ever and when I say ever okay maybe in years when a new owner but I'm saying with the current owners they're not bringing back a bunch of the casinos Palms is already done Excalibur is not even on a list to open so I had already heard that one was going to be scrapped but then I saw the new list of like the kind of some of them have some kind of jotted out ideas of plans Excalibur is not on there uh, what was one of the other ones uh, I had heard it wasn't, but uh, yeah, uh, uh, Wynn is probably only going to open Wynn, not Encore, Venetian, not Palazzo. Um, yeah, I even heard they're not even sure if they're going to be opening Caesar's Palace anytime in the near future, because that one's their biggest, so that's, you know, the most expensive. So they're planning on opening more like a Flamingo or one like that for Caesars. So if you guys are unaware, Caesars and MGM own most of the Strip. So it's either mainly um, Caesars or MGM. And then you have the couple of um, odd ones, which would be Wynn and Encore, which was Steve Wynn's properties, and then Venetian and Palazzo, which are Sheldon Adelson's properties. And then you had Cosmo, which has actually changed owners like three or four times already since the beginning. Um, that one's been on its own. And then Tropicana um, uh, is on its own. And then um, Treasure Island. And Treasure Island, I guess that guy has just got so much money. He's hoping to be one of the first to open. He's talking about opening on the 22nd. But like I said, Governor like still hasn't said if they can open on the 22nd. He hasn't given that approval yet. So we'll see. But um, the rest of the properties all belong to either MGM or Caesars. And so that, like Caesars is Caesars, um, Haras, uh, uh, Planet Hollywood, um, Link, um, you know, a, a bunch of them over there. And then... Um, like MGM is Bellagio, Mandalay, Luxor, Excalibur, uh, you know, uh, Mirage. See, like the, it's like MGM, Aria. Um, so if you think of like half is basically Caesar and half is basically MGM. And those ones, we don't know how many they're going to open. But those two control basically 11 to 12 properties I think they each own. And so they're only planning on talking about opening one or two of their properties so right there that's like 10 properties done 
you know, like that won't open any time in the near future, you know, for each one of those people. <gasps> and then, like I said, you have a couple of little oddball ones. Those ones are planning on opening more. Than, it's like the smaller ones are, uh, I think they're probably have less overhead than those huge companies had because those huge companies are struggling. Oh, and that's another thing, you know, this whole Jim Murian thing. Jim Murian was the CEO for MGM. So MGM is, like I said, M Life, which is about 11 or 12 properties. Um, and maybe less. I don't know. They sold a couple. There might be less now, but it's somewhere around that number. Um, and they all said Circus Circus. Like they just sold Circus Circus recently. He decided to resign I think it was um early in this year or maybe late last year I can't remember the exact date Jay Rich knows but right as a time that like their whole s plan in this plan of this hoax because they already knew that there was China had already done this uh, scare so this you know happened in January so Jim Murin cashes out all of his stocks for MGM all of it and he resigns then he goes to work for Steve Sisolak and they tank the economy and he buys all of his stocks back on pennies on the dollar I think those two should be investigated for stock fraud you know uh, when it comes to stocks they don't really allow for a lot of like luck like oh you just got lucky that there happened to be a flu virus that came over and then you you know made up billions of dollars because there was this deadly flu virus what you're finding out is not deadly so hmm. and governor just like allowed construction the entire time during this process which would prove he knew it wasn't deadly which would prove he knew they were going to tank the economy and so that would be highly illegal what Jim Mirren did by cashing out his stocks right before they tanked it and then buying them back after they tanked the economy that is highly illegal i hope they both go to prison you know they could be having the sec investigating them they should hopefully they will because what they did is illegal you can't do that you can't uh fuck with the stocks like that that's it's illegal you can't do this insider trading and sharing of all this info and stuff and uh, conspiring it's illegal so that would be interesting to see what happens. Hopefully Governor Sislik will go to prison. That would be the best thing that came out of all of this. If we had to tank Nevada to put that guy in prison, we'll do it. It would be worth it. Him and Jim Mirren, it would be worth it. See those two? Man, all the casinos. Bye, guys. Enjoy. Oh, yeah. Tao, I hope you made the pr prison conditions good while you were governor. <laughs> Too. Anyways, you guys, um, I'm gonna get off here. Jay Richie, you're around? Yeah. I'm gonna get off here. Are y'all finished, Jay? Yeah, that was All it. Alright, thanks, I guys. It. Like I'm still a day yo, and it's been like that since the day yo. On more time than a rolly or Senko. Step on deck, your neck, or do what I say so. Get up and get out, get down and lay down. Let's move. Shout out to my man Kelly Kwame. We on top. Shout out, shout out, check it out.